Hi, this is Tom Peterson with NVIDIA, and today I want to introduce you to our next generation GPU architecture, Maxwell. It comes in two variations, GTX 980 and GTX 970, both of which use the power of architecture to give you the best perf per watt possible. These are the world's most advanced GPUs. The GTX 980 delivers 2x performance over the GTX 680, and in fact, it's the fastest GPU we've ever created. The 970 is no slouch in its own right, with best-in-class performance stacked with cutting-edge features. Of course, since these GPUs are based on the new Maxwell architecture, they deliver performance in an incredible 165 watts, which means your PC will be whisper quiet as it crushes through the latest games. And we're delivering better gameplay experiences using cool new technologies. Multi-frame anti-aliasing or MFAA is one example where we can deliver high quality AA at much higher performance. It's a simple idea that says by looking at multiple frames over time, we can actually combine them and generate an image with the same quality as MSAA, but we can do that at a fraction of the performance cost of traditional multi-sampling. Let's start to understand MFAA better by understanding how AA works. This image shows a grid of 25 pixels that represents a very small area of your screen. If a game draws a straight line on this grid, the GPU must determine the correct color to use for each pixel. The way the GPU does that is by sampling. And sampling means that we pick some location, which in this case is the very center of the grid, to use as the test location to determine if a geometric shape intersects a pixel and should thus color it. You can see that we get a very jagged edge when we use one sample since each pixel needs to make a binary decision about coverage. Traditional AA improves this a lot by taking more than one sample per pixel. In this image, we're showing two sample points per pixel. Now for each pixel, the GPU calculates two coverage points. If a particular geometry covers only one of the two sample points, then the final pixel color is of course the average of the two colors. This technique dramatically improves image quality by reducing jaggies, but the cost can be high as now the GPU needs to do more calculations on each frame. MFAA dramatically improves this by recognizing that the averaging that MSAA does per pixel can actually be done over time. In the first frame, let's assume that the following grid of sample positions is used. You can see the image here is similar to what no AA looks like. Now in the next frame, we change the sample positions. You can see how the generated image is slightly different from the prior frame, with just a few pixels changing from light to dark and vice versa. We can then run a sophisticated filter on the GPU to combine the series of frames and deliver an image that's nearly identical to 2x MSAA. The great part about this tech, though, is that the delivered performance is nearly identical to no AA. Dynamic Super Resolution, or DSR, is a great new Maxwell technology that allows you to get a 4K experience on a 19 by 10 monitor. The way it works is pretty simple. GPUs use a frame buffer to store a rendered image before they're scanned onto a monitor. Most of the time, that buffer is organized at a resolution that matches the resolution of your monitor. But many gamers have found that sometimes it's desirable to lower the resolution of the frame buffer to get higher frame rates out of the GPU. In this case, the GPU scales up the rendered image as it's scanned onto the monitor. DSR, however, goes the other way. With super resolution technology, we allow the game to specify a resolution that's actually larger than your monitor. This means the GPU will generate a very high quality image in the local frame buffer, and then use a sophisticated filter to downscale it and put it onto your monitor. This reduces artifacts caused by rendering at low resolutions. This image, as an example, is a fragment of an image generated at 19 by 10. That same scene is shown again here, but now it's rendered at 4K using DSR, and then it's downscaled to 19 by 10. The image we're showing is exactly as it would appear on your monitor, and comparing the two, you can see the improved texture and edge quality. This technology works really well with objects in motion as well. Let's take a look at this 19 by 10 image here, running without DSR. Notice the scintillation in the grass as textures kind of pop in and out. In the second sample, you can see the image is much clearer and the objects look much more solid. Let me tell you a little bit about VXGI, or Voxel Global Illumination. 
It's a technology that allows us to simulate light inside of your game in real time. That means that shadows look better, colors bounce around, and the scene is much more realistic. You're looking at a ray-traced image of the Cornell box, which is a classic set of geometry from the early days back in 1984, when everybody was trying to figure out how to do real-time rendering. The problem with this box is that it's actually very difficult to calculate how light bounces it around it in real time. So in graphics, we use simplification techniques. The easiest way to calculate light is what's called direct. That means we imagine there's a point light source that illuminates directly down onto the geometry, but only lights the surfaces that it hits directly. That's why we call it direct light. In this case, you can see the top of the balls are very bright white. The right wall is green and the left wall is red. And that direct light kind of, it looks good, but it, it's missing because clearly you understand that there's gonna be reflections. Well, reflections and calculating reflections in real time has been a really difficult problem for graphics. And really until now, it's been practically impossible. This image is showing a voxel view of that geometry. Now, voxels are volume pixels, and it's a way to represent geometry sort of coarser so that we can model real-time light reflectivity. In this view, you're looking at what we call an opacity model. And the opacity model is used to calculate how light is blocked by objects. And you can see that it's made up of these tiny little boxes. That simplification versus the real geometry helps us run this in real time. Now the next view you're looking at is called an emissive view. In this view, we're taking direct light and we're lighting the voxels. And then we're gonna, in the next stage, use that lit voxel to calculate the first bounce of light. In this case, you can see the right-hand wall is very green and the left-hand wall is very red. In the next stage, those surfaces are going to emit light onto the rest of the surroundings. That's effectively how we calculate reflection. Now, as I move the light around, you can see that the voxel geometry is actually changing in response to the way direct light is illuminating the scene. This is just another way to say, okay, we're gonna calculate a bounce. So if you look as that light pans from the green wall to the red wall, the white voxels uh, appear and disappear. In this next scene, the voxels are now emitting light or reflecting the original direct light. You can see the ball on the left-hand side has this sort of reddish glow to it. That's there because remember the left wall is emitting red light. And on the right-hand side, you can see there's kind of a green pale to the right-hand ball. And that again is coming from the right-hand wall, which is emitting green light. What's interesting though, is you can also see both walls are now kind of the opposite color that they were originally, because of course, each wall is gently lighting the other side. This gives you a real sense of how reflected light would work in the real world, and now we're able to do that in real time. And now let's take all those different forms of light and combine them together to get a final image. In this scene, you're looking at the direct light coming from the top, and it's hitting the walls, and we're adding in that light that we calculated using VXGI. That light gives us the specular highlights, it gives us very beautiful ambient occlusion. The balls look like they're on the ground. What's really extra cool is that you can see the reflection of one ball in the other ball. If you look closely at the ball in the back, you can see this interesting silver shape, which is actually the ball in the front. VXGI is a revolutionary new dynamic lighting technology being delivered with Maxwell GPUs. It's going to change the way games look forever, and we're all going to be the better for it. The advancements extend beyond the new technologies to new ways to play. Maxwell offers the best solution for 4K gaming, with the horsepower to hit the frame rates you gotta have, and 4K surround using SLI, and even 4K shadow play. You can now take your PC gaming on the road with GameStream and our Shield family. And of course, GTX 980 is ready for the next generation of games with full support for DX12 and virtual reality. With new technologies like MFAA, DSR, and VXGI, they are simply the best choice for serious gamers.